Hi there, this is Sheena Rowlands and today I'm sharing with you a scrapbook process video for the Mixed Media Frenzy YouTube Hop. This is the layout that we've all got to be inspired by today and I will share my version. So I printed out a picture of the layout just so I can have it as an easy reference on my desk. I like the idea that's one central photograph and a diagonal um, embellishment from that photo. So I've got the same photo here in two different sizes and I decide to use the square and I just cut out a piece of scrap paper in the same size as the photo just so I can uh, work out its placement when it comes to the mixed media. So I have a dig through my paints. These are Jane Davenport, the Bright palette. I've had these a little while and as you can see I've only taken the paper off some of the colours and I also have the Artist Loft ones. I think most people have those these days. I also have these Japanese paints that were a present which I have to confess I've never used before. So I've, I've dug all three sets out and I'm going to get started. So just using some of the Artist Loft paints, I want to use blues and greens that coordinate well with the photograph. I set off trying to get a diagonal across the page of with the packaging technique and just some of this light blue paint. As you can see I'm using quite a thick acetate to apply the paint and I just keep cleaning it off on the kitchen roll so that each time it's uh, it's clean when I use it. Also if I think the paint's too thick I just quickly roll the kitchen roll across it and that will remove any of the excess. So I'm certainly no uh, mixed media expert. I do like the look of it. I don't always get it right. But I do think it adds another layer to any scrapbooking page. So at the moment you can barely see this, but I'm using this as a first um, layout, a first layer, sorry. And I'm just looking there with my photograph and just giving it a quick dry. I've got one of those original drying tools that looks like a hairdryer. I'm not sure they even make those these days. But it, uh, it certainly lasted a long time and has done me well. So I'm bringing in a brighter green paint this time. Overlapping the blue a little bit but uh, also filling some of the gaps in the diagonal that I'm creating. And then I'm just dabbing it off so it doesn't make the cardstock too wet. It is thick white cardstock and I have pre-gessoed it with a clear gesso in advance. That was a Dina Wakely Media clear gesso that I used. And I tend to do that with a, a roller just to give a, a good coverage over the cardstock. So that's certainly helping the paint move when I put it down. So I, I had an idea, as you may have just seen there, to add some die cuts over the top of this paint. So I was just look, thinking about how big they are as well. So now I'm coming in with the Jane Davenport paints. I feel like I'm a little, feeling a little bit braver. And this blue is definitely a lot brighter and goes with the coat that I'm wearing in the photograph. I think once I put one layer down, I, I seem to have more courage, if that's the right word, to add more paint as I go along. So I'm just mixing the paint in a palette before I add it to the acetate. I love the fact you can pick it up and put it down. And then uh, I tend to rub it with my thumb rather than my nails. Because I found in the past that I've managed to literally scratch the paint or scratch the cardstock underneath it. So I'm very careful just to use the pads of my fingers when I rub the acetate. So I've got the photograph in position, I like the way it's all looking. I'm going to add a brighter green now to go with that blue. This again is another one of the Jane Davenport paints. And it uh, works as a good contrast to the blue that I've already got down. I'm sticking to the same diagonal format. I mean there's no skill at all in what I'm doing, I'm just adding some paint where I like. Bending the cards to, uh, bending the acetate to, so it doesn't leave any harsh lines when I put the paint down. But at the moment I'm actually liking the way that it's looking, so I'm keeping going, adding a little bit more as I go. I carried the paint underneath the photograph just in case. So 
I'm now adding some spots over uh, some splatters over the colour, so they're green splatters over the green. And when that dries, I will do the same with the blue. Obviously, even though it's exactly the same paint, it comes through uh, a bit darker. I found a Vicky Bootin paper that I quite like, so I'm just going to add that underneath the photograph after I've distressed the edges. It's got both shades of blue and green in it. So I took the die cuts and I stuck them to some vellum. They're from Pear Tree Crafts. Uh, I think I believe they're called Floral Cluster. So I put them aside to dry while I just finish with the paint, just adding those blue splatters that I mentioned earlier. I'm really happy with the uh, diagonal look of this and I think it will uh, work underneath the die cuts. So I'm just adding my photograph to the pattern paper and then I'm going to add that on foam pads. And then I'm going to start to cluster the vellum back die cuts around it. I've got an idea where I want them to go um, when I looked at it earlier but now that I've got some foam on the back I just want to be sure before I start to stick them down want to make sure there's enough colour showing around them before I actually get to that final stage. So I bring in the paint again, just using what's left on the palette just to extend that diagonal a little bit and then using the acetate just to spread it just so that it actually goes around the outside of some of these die cuts. Seems a shame to have done all the painting and to cover it all so I'm just expanding it a little bit. Because the cardstock was gessoed at the very beginning the paint is still moving really well so you won't be able to tell where I've come back in um, after it's all dried. I'm just trying not to wet the spots and the splatters too much as I don't want those to spread I still want them to be quite obvious. So I'm just having a little bit of a fiddle with it really. So that's now all dry I'm going to come in now and start to stick these down. Off camera I added little bits of foam so it's all behind the die cut rather than behind the vellum. I hate it when you can see it. I'm just adding it to this last one here. Uh, a bit fiddly really, and then, uh, but I like the way, the final result. Finally, just get, making sure they're where, I, where they want to be. I feel that I've followed the uh, layout we were lifting pretty well, particularly with the diagonal. I've got some butterflies there, which I don't actually use. I use some butterflies from Simple Stories in the final image. The word together is from Bramble Fox. I thought we didn't need to add any more colour so I've stuck with white for my title. And I think it really goes well and brings the focus back to the photograph. I like to uh, take my time as you can see when I'm making these layouts and uh, just making sure I'm happy with the final placement as these goes down. Really hope that you hop on round the Mixed Media Frenzy girls today. There's lots listed in the comments below. Have a look, subscribe if you don't already. Give them a thumbs up. Lots of different vari variants of the same layout. Lots of different uh, directions we've taken it in. And everybody would love for you to have a look at what they've made. I was really thrilled to be able to join them this month. And I certainly will be joining them again. So if you'd like to subscribe to my channel too, I'd really be chuffed. And you'll be able to see what I make in the future. So I'm just looking at the final placement. As I say, I will change these butterflies for a, another sort. But these were these were vellum and I decided that paper, I prefer paper ones. So here is the final layout and some close-ups too. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to you joining me again. Bye for now.